All right, we're gonna get straight into this video. It's been a while, two months, because I've been broke and I could not afford to do things to my car. There's been some things planning in the brewing, if that makes any sense. And we're installing a turbo kit. Ooh. All right, so this. We're installing a 64, 66 ball bearing Pulsar turbo. Now, to my knowledge, there is one other X3, the homie Kyle in Houston. You think I was talking to myself? <laughs> Kyle out in Houston, he is running a spool kit. I don't know which one it is, but it's like same thing to the 6466. He's fast, faster than this dude. <laughs> this is the first YouTube documented single turbo X3 that's gonna be on this earth. And uh, and there's an X3M on the UK, but Ishmael said, Them people don't count because they don't speak English. <laughs> Yeah, that red X3 makes like a thousand horsepower on the S58 motor, single turbo, very big turbo. I don't know what it is. We're gonna go through, not a DIY, because I do not create DIYs. Not because I'm gatekeeping the knowledge. Just saying you should go to this man if you're in the Central Texas area and need your car fixed. This man has already taken off the air box. Give me a little uh, talk so, what's going on. We've already taken off the air box. It's cool. So we already taken off the air box. Uh, we're trying to take the intake pipe off. I have to take the intake pipe off. We'll have a clear shot to the turbo. Um, after that, we'll take off the charge pipe, replace it with the brand new ones we have, and then we'll go from there. You sound like Kern being on monitor hey, it's that easy guys i don't know why you make it so complicated hey plug yourself real quick uh my instagram is divine e90 uh and i run boost fiend garage how fast is your car 700 horsepower you have any videos forward. of it uh no i have none not not right now but when i put the single turbo well not single turbo when i put the build motor in We'll go. He's talking a whole lot of nonsense right now. He has a stock N52. <laughs> We've already come across issue number one of the stock setup. All right, so if we look inside, oh yeah, yeah. So that is oil in the intake of the turbo. That's not good. Essentially what happened there is, everyone knows on B58s, especially Gen 1s. This is Gen 2s also. So if you're B58 high mileage and you know the PCV issue, it's gonna let gases go by which allows oil to bypass through the system into areas where you don't want it to and sometimes your car will whistle like crazy like my car did a long time ago and started blowing out crazy amounts of smoke and I FaceTime this dude so quick what happens is um, the crankcase fails the PCB fails the plastic diaphragm up top and when it fails it pushes uh, air through any seal they can get out of so usually you'll hear a whistling because it's coming from the front crank or the rear crank seal so your car is not toast <laughs> but it could be <laughs> If your car starts smoking and starts making like teapot noises, like my car did, go buy this $15 rubber gasket, get the spring kits, 18 bucks, go to Amazon. It's all the same thing. Replace it, it takes less than 10 minutes. So far, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate this uninstall? Uh, uh, like hard or? 10 being easy, zero being hard. Uh, Probably like a, right now, where we're at right now, probably like a 10, this is so crazy. On a scale of N54 twin turbos compared to B58 single turbo uninstall, what would oh, you rate? Zero. <laughs> N54s are, you, you gotta fight them, fight them, fight them. Currently, we are taking off the C-clip for the last portion of the intake pipe, which the part that needs to come off. Ooh, I'm wondering, what do we do with this once we have the aftermarket set up on? You're gonna have to vent the at until you do a catch cam, unless you wanna run it to like the front of the turbo and kinda have a second. Problem number one, arising with future plans. It's just so dusty, bro. It's all that oil grind. Yeah. Yeah. I would show you guys what's going on, but you're gonna have to go to my Patreon and pay $10 a month. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just too lazy to move the camera. <gasps> I bet you can just hear how gritty that is. It's this car sting, guys. Not good. We are taking off the heat tray that also holds the wires for the O2 sensors. Four 13 meter, <laughs> four 13 mil bolts. Aluminum, aluminum bolts. <clears throat> All right, new camera angle. Look here, man, look here. I'm running this show. Hey, hey. <laughs> Remember who fed you this morning? <laughs> How many meats was it? Three meats. <laughs> All right, so now, oh, dude, those are the worst. You want to pick, bro? It took me like 15 minutes disconnecting, connecting those. Bro? They're the worst. Sliding them off, where it slides on and off, dude, that was a pain in that. Yeah, that's what I had, bro. And I thought I broke something. I think I might have. I'll do everything under the car. <laughs> under the car? Yeah, I'll do everything under the car. Oh! <laughs> I'm already. Where'd you move my light? Oh. O2 sensors out the way. Tray bolts coming off as we speak. As you unbolt. <laughs> 
Oh. Yeah, all this is old oil. Interesting. It's coming out of here. See right here? It's about away. Uh. Yeah, let's blame the previous owner. You didn't beat on it, bro. I really did it. Not too bad. No. I just did a couple of pulls and that's it. I, mean, I only raced like two people. <laughs> For real? Yeah, bro. So that's the feed right here. So you take those two out the block. Right here, these two. Charge pipe off first. Sorry, next to the first. I forgot. Who's stealing my catless cat? I'm not gonna lie though, I do hate I drive so laggy. That one? I drive seven. No, this one. So there's like a little delay whenever you like go to the next song. But then you know, updating stuff and then having a tuned car on new cars. They like to act weird. You know, there's been so many stories like, bro, my dealer just updated my car and now I don't have any of my tunes and it's locked again. I think you guys can go under there. I was gonna be under there. Oh, well, should your ass get under there like that? Yeah, I can. At one? <laughs> no. I'm gonna say, bro, what? Had a quick little break. Realized we didn't have the oil drain pan to collect all the old oil. So you know what? Those drain pan things are like 10, 15 bucks if you go to Walmart, O'Reilly's, whatever. I came up with this brilliant idea. Put a kiddie pool under the car. Now, the main reason for that is because we're gonna have to pull, pull out all the oil fill, oil drain, coolant fill, coolant drain for the old turbo. The new turbo is only oil cooled. I was like, you know what? To catch all this mess, Let's just get a kiddie pool. Ten dollars. Genius. Ugh. Okay. Ow! Should we take off this tray? This uh, under tray, so all the fluids can come out later. Okay. Oh, nice and black. Oh my gosh. What happens when you drive seven thousand miles? Probably almost eight. You're at eight thousand miles. I don't think so. The floor is cold. Hey, rather this cold than hot. <laughs> <laughs> Swallowed air. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, like when you swallow air and it's really sharp. Uh, oh, this is where I hit the deer. You see the deer here? <laughs> this is hole. Oh wow. Yeah, that's where the deer was. Bro, getting brake clean your eyes is like the worst. E85 too. <laughs> Same thing. That burns. <laughs> yep, a rock just hit me in the dick. Oh! I'm disconnected right here. Oh, it's hooked on. <laughs> uh, why is it not letting me go fast? Oh. So why is it not letting me go fast? <laughs> Doesn't help that when I bought this car, I went to South Padre. And literally, as soon as we got there, since we couldn't check into the Airbnb, we pulled up to an empty spot on the beach. We, we, he had a Jeep, I had this, and we just drove onto the sand, we played football. <laughs> you know, this week marks one year with this car. This has been a year already? Yeah, bro. 20, 27,000 miles. How many miles are next five, though? Uh, 160. I'll, I'll catch up. Nah. <laughs> I, I road trip that thing, man. I do this, I road trip every day. Oh, so many dirt in my eye. <laughs> oh, oh, this is the hybrid system. Oh, how long did that take? Day four, taking this down pipe. Ugh. Let me get some wiggle space and kind of keep it firm up there. Oh, we still got like a whole like half an inch. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, it kind of worked. It's sliding around in there. Yes, it's off. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Ready. This will be RSF? Nope. China. Just give it a bath after what you did. That pipe that you have that's supposed to go to the block actually goes to the back. Got the downpipe off. We're getting all of the fluid drain and feed lines off. One thing we realized about this car compared to F30s and older B58 Gen 1s is the coolant feed, or yeah, the coolant feed comes out of the block on the turbo side, on the hot side. But we're finding that this car, which is like, it's Gen 1 B58, but it's also a G chassis. So it's in that weird transition. The coolant feed line comes straight from the pump. In that line, there is a rubber line that you have to plug up for this kit because we're running an oil feed oil cool turbo yeah now we are turn taking off the turbo. turbo yeah our pool has done a great job only like those few spills of coolant but everything else is clean under the car so get yourself a ten dollar kitty pool we're gonna use this bolt that was used to hold on the turbo um this was a part of the bracket there is a bottom bolt underneath the exhaust housing that supports the turbo from shaking around like crazy so we're gonna use this to plug it up it should fit, we'll see. If not, we'll go to Home Depot down the road. And this diesel turbo X5, fastest in the world. Zero to 60 in 
6.5, nah, not that slow. We're gonna take this turbo off, plug up the coolant line, compare PP sizes of turbos, <laughs> and then we should be good to start installing the turbo. I thought you were licking my ear, fool. I hurt. <laughs> oh, it's the camera. It's oh, the no, camera. It's mouth, bro. I think. It might have been. Let me slide that clamp off. So we just need to get, so this is the coolant line we're talking about. There we go, so that line right there, you see the vice grip, that is a line we're gonna be plugging up because this car does not go to the block for the coolant feed. <laughs> it's like a gender reveal, bro. Oh, we gotta freaking pull that. See me go. You got the clamp on the, on the pipe. Oh, it's holding it? Yeah. <laughs> not coming out. I look back, the clamp is just holding the pipe in. Oh, no. Did you rip? Damn call. But. No, we did huh? I forgot to tell you, but take the drain off. The what? The drain. Coolant drain. drain? No, turbo drain. Oh. Well, I guess I'm too short. <laughs> How'd you know? Flash me down. You're definitely supposed to just show bottle. <laughs> I don't think you can though. Okay. You got, got it? Push that up, yeah. That's the first one I've ever put it. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever pulled a drain from the top. Right there, you see that fitting right there? Yeah, I saw that one. That's the, for That's the block. The oh, doctor. Tell us what we see. So, this one usually goes to the block. I'm not sure which year they changed it though, but this one goes to the block on like most F30s I work on or Supras. These go straight to the block, but on yours, it goes all the way around to the manifold and wraps behind the whole motor. So we just unclipped it from here. We'll dead it here on the plastic hose that's still on there. And you're good to go. What do you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> We're going crazy for the coolant feed line, which is a hose. And we didn't realize the kit comes with the plug. Oh, it's lubed up. No, it's not? Oh, yeah, a little bit. You're good, you good? Oh! So yeah, the kit does come with a plug for the hose. But I guess some B58s came with a feed through the block, and some came with a hose all the way from the pump. The more you know, <laughs> answer the knowing, the more you know me. <laughs> da -da -da. Currently, we are installing the Pulsar wastegate onto the Manifold, just because it makes things easier. I don't know who would install a manifold upside down in the car because it'd be living. Right now, we're not going to be running any kind of boost controller because I'm going to bleep that out. <laughs> the person shipping my motive and my boost controller is a little bit delayed. So we're going to be running off of gate and disable electronic wastegate in boot mode. We're going to get tuned just to kind of drive it around. We're not going to be racing no one. Just doing it for sound at this point. We're lining up the air in and vent, and then we're gonna be putting one of these 1 8 MPT fittings into the charge pipe for our boost reference. Because Pulsar doesn't come with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because they saw it on the last video with the, the TU oh, pump. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the gold wrench. No. Yes, no? Nah, 13. 13. Shout out to Turbo Smart. <laughs> And for everyone wondering what this white stuff is, it's not Teflon tape, Teflon water, liquid Teflon essentially. Thread sealant, high temperature, but it's not like thread locker. What is it like? It's better than Teflon because it actually doesn't dry and it stays wet and it actually seals better than Teflon because when Teflon starts to rip, degrade, it goes into your turbo and it blows it up. All right, so we're putting the turbo in the car or the manifold, rather. I have not shown y'all the turbo yet. Take off your intake resonator thingamabobber bracket that holds the grommets. I hate that these holes are open. Probably put some bolts back in. Mm. Cause it just looks empty. All right, slap the bolt back in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this manifold in. She in there? Yeah, she in there, but I need a bolt. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what? What? Put them all by the holes. Huh? Just... Copper nuts. Focus. 
Copper nut back and then front. Dang, I need a spool, high pressure fuel pump so bad. I think looks ugly now that I've seen everyone else's. It looks, it looks like Minecraft. I installed it on a- BMW. What, like a FX? So right now we are mocking up the turbo. Oh, bro, we're gold. Yeah, hell yeah. That's good. Now if we're running a bigger turbo, I think we'll still be fine if we run a bigger turbo. We gotta take this off anyways, so we'll be able to push this down. You have to like lift, like hold the manifold up and then tighten the bolt down because mm. the way the housing is. We're gonna have to spin the housing this way so the pipe comes out yeah. and connects this way. Well, yeah, we can go down and then the pipe will swoop up. It's a, it's O-ring, so I mean, it's a clamp, so we can actually spin these as much as we want. Mm. We just gotta make sure this bend goes here. Mm. So mm -hmm. We'll put all these on first and then this oh, one. Oh, okay, pipe. I see. We'll get, we'll, get we'll get it. We'll get it, we'll get it off. <clears throat> oh, almost slipped and died. So, as I'm eating the Chipotle bowl right now, Ishmael's in the process of disassembling the single turbo kit. We forgot the washer. No, I'm kidding. Ishmael's completing the kit. Ish, until. Ish, not not your name. Oh. As in, kind of. Um, as I finish the Chipotle bowl. Because I have not ate since breakfast. So, enjoy this. Enjoy this ASMR. <laughs> Insert the do that to me. Do that to me. Do that to me. Editor, add that in. I'm the editor. <laughs> so we test fit the turbo. Very, very dry install. Fits fine. The turbine housing. Clears the, clears the, what would you call that? Like strut tower-ish side of the, yeah, strut tower. Clears that wall, very fine. Also very, very dry mounted the down pipe, which is two pieces. Um, that clears the terminals for the positive for like jumping your car from the front or something thing like that. Um, huh? Barely. Barely? Barely. It was pretty tight. Luckily, those wires, those very thick gauges are already covered in heat resistant material. Kind of chilling there. Is there any big big worries about this kit so far? Uh, not really. So there's nothing too worrying, too worrisome about this kit. The only thing is the oil drain is a little bit long. I'd say it could be like a centimeter shorter. Uh, if that, I like an inch. Like an inch. A centimeter to an inch shorter. I don't, I mean, this is really, I don't think it's a chassis thing. It's probably just the build uh, and the length of the wire or chassis. line. Could be chassis. Maybe it's like positioned differently, the drain. Yeah, it might be uh, on uh, that 30 it's a little different. Maybe. Uninstalling definitely took the longest. I think the longest thing was taking off the under tray. And I kid you not, go get a swimming pool, kiddie pool. Game changer. After an hour of our last portion of filming, Ishmael forgot this bracket. Took about 45 minutes. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, essentially it's a bracket. But right here, it seats the nuts onto the exhaust manifold into the butt. That doesn't really go into a block. It just goes onto studs. And it lets the manifold sit on the block. <laughs> or head, I guess. Yeah. So all we gotta do now, clock the turbo, down pipe on, intake pipe on, drain fill on, fluids, tune done. We're good to go. Send them out the way. You kind of sit them there so they're just there. And then when you put the turbo in, that's you line them up. We are currently fitting up the drain. We fitted up, the, oh, we fitted up the drain line. We are now fitting up the feed line. We also bolted down the turbine housing. The next step is to figure out where to clock the compressor housing along with the intake pipes and pressure. And then the last one, that's what we're gonna do. After that, downpipe, fluids to be it. That's all she wrote. Man, that's all she wrote. <laughs> all right, guys. So we now have the cold pipes on, or I guess intercooler intake manifold pipes. Map sensor is connected right there, right there. Yep. And then that's all connected. These are all tight. Nice bar or beaded seatings for the bead rolled pipes for our nice Speed Tech branded. 
silicone pipes to fit on. And then now we just got the downpipe left. <clears throat> Alright. What our man Mr. Ishmael is doing right here. He is do he's putting on the block off plate for where the wastegate would recirculate if we had a recirculating dump. But we are going open dump. AKA screamer pipe. By some corny people's logic vocabulary. Uh, oh yeah, speed tech. Uh, probably put, I don't know, but put like some kind of instruction to how to clock it probably, we think, because I know a lot of people aren't very mechanically inclined to do this. I mean, they should be sure it's all this kit. But because you gotta use, there's a bracket on the block off plate. There's another bracket that goes with the dump tube. So like you put this one on here and then you put the other side onto the bracket on the block off plate. Which is a lot of nonsense. Three pieces just to have a bracket. I thought we can make it one piece some way. Just dump it. Straight what down. It's gonna be 11 mil. 11 mil. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, we are under the car. So, right now we're looking at the dump tube. And then it goes up to, oh, you can't really see anything. All right, there's a flex pipe for the lower section of the down pipe. And then there is a, there's a V-band to the upper portion. Um, you should definitely install that off of the car. Cause we spent about 45 minutes, uh, like 30 minutes fighting to get the V-band to fit over the faces of the down pipes, plural. And then, we are done with the physical portions of installing this turbo kit. Turbo, feed, drain is down there. We have piping, all the way across piping. <laughs> Waste gates underneath on the bottom side of the manifold. And then obviously down pipe. Um, we could wrap this, but we should be fine. Speed Tech. Shout out Speed Tech. Shout out Jeff. And yeah. Car is back on the ground. Oil filter in. Downpipe's good. Turbo's good. We still gotta prime it. Ishmael is putting oil without a funnel in pretty seamlessly. It's been a rough day. Nah, it's been pretty smooth. Pretty rough. Pretty smooth. Um, it is currently like 10.30. 11? I don't know, I lost track of time. And uh, we started at like 12 really, like 12.30, 12. Let the car cool down and everything. Could have gotten this done quicker, but we just kind of did things our own way instead of following the instruction. Sorry, Jeff. Right, we're gonna fill the car with oil. I have to do the coolant flush process thing where you press the gas pedal, turn the heat up all the way, let it do its thing for like 10, 15 minutes, get the air bubbles out, flash the bass tune, and we're good. We get a first startup. We couldn't get the coolant thing to flush out, so we primed the motor up, or primed the turbo, well, the whole motor with oil, oil pressure built up. Um, so really, all that's left is for the coolant to kind of go through the system, so we're gonna leave the cap open, let the bubbles kind of burp out for about 10, 15 minutes. And yeah, we're gonna get a first startup. If it starts up, because we're kind of low on battery voltage. Hopefully it can't do thing in the starter. Alright, we're gonna get my initial reaction because I didn't get to hear the turbo whistle because BMW X3's 2019 had great insulation on the inside. And all I heard was exhaust from the back of the building. So, 
This meal's gonna start up because we still have to run it some more to get the coolant. I mean, coolant's already fine. We just, yeah. just want to let it run. So, let me get my reaction to it. Ready? Yeah. All right, <clears throat> I just made it back home. We had some tuning issues, but we're fine. We made it back home, 30 minute drive. Perfectly fine, kept it under 2K for, you know, keeping it safe on a, not meant to be driven on map. Good. You can hear the whistle going off. Look, I mean, this car has some crazy sound editing. Other than that, pretty good. Yeah, shout out to Ishmael. He is the GOAT, you know, more than just being a mechanic and builder. Um, someone who loves his craft and BMWs and just cars in general because he works on a lot of American cars too. Yeah, just the homie is the homie. Like, you already, you know your homies when they like will be there for you whenever you need them to. Ishmael is one of those kind of people and like that's how he treats all of, all of his customers. You know, as long as you are nice and a kind person and understanding, he will be the same to you and give you not only that but also that and the quality that he performs but if you need someone to work on your cars in the central texas area he will travel to you if you're special boost Fiend garage on instagram hit him up follow him message him say what's up but yeah it is now 1 46 a.m i'm tired i guess we'll end the video here thanks for watching and hope you have a great one